Have you ever watched a movie from your childhood and thought it doesn't quite hold up like you remember? Well then you would enjoy our bi-weekly series, Does It Hold Up? Where we revisit classic drama films with a special guest to help us determine if it is as good or as bad as we remember. It's a whole lot of fun, so you should check it out. But only if you like fun. If you enjoy sorrow and despair, you, I, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Please check out the Drunk Bantha channel. They clearly are ready for being seen at a higher level. Hello, you beautiful nerds. So I've been watching all the X-Men movies, just sort of preparing for the new Deadpool movie that's coming out. And as I'm watching them, because I wasn't watching them in any particular order at first, uh, but as I started watching them, I was like, how is anybody supposed to make any sense of this shit? The timeline for these movies are famously all over the place. Nothing really makes any sense. But guys, I'm here to tell you that I do see a way. There is a narrow path through. Listen, I gave Yes, if you want to marathon all these movies, there is a satisfying order in which you can watch this marathon. And I would love to share my personal list with you guys. This is my X-Men marathon list. So sit back, we're gonna get comfortable and uh, talk about I know there are a lot of these movies, but this is that's why they call it a marathon and not a sprint. But we're gonna do this together. We're gonna we're gonna do this together. Here we go. Maximum effort. So to begin our X-Men marathon, I think we should start with Now hear me out. Yes. This movie is bad, but it is hilarious. And even if it's not on purpose, this is always a fun viewing experience for me. This movie is so dumb and the ending is especially baffling considering what happens later on in Logan's story. Also, Logan being the oldest of the X-Men, it helps to start with this story if you want to make sense of all this timeline stuff. If there's any sense to be made anyway. Or at least it gives you a good idea of the scope of this universe to start off. Like if you're refreshing yourself, this is a good starting off point and just like remembering how big the scale is of this universe, even though it gets, this isn't the best that they've done. If you're doing a big marathon, this is the perfect one to start with while you get your snacks together and roll some joints and get, get your, make yourself a drink before you have to actually start paying attention to these movies. And let's be honest, you're gonna wanna get this one out of the way as soon as possible. So now on to number two. X-Men. Okay, so this is where the real marathon starts. The OG X-Men flick that helped kickstart this superhero film era. This is a pretty simple film and still holds up pretty well. The dialogue ranges from corny to downright bad sometimes, but any scene with Jackman, McKellen, or Stewart adds five bonus points to any given scene that they're in. This film continues Logan's storyline and introduces Charles as sort of a father figure, helping him find a family in the X-Men. And family is a theme that comes up many times throughout the series. Like this is very much a found family story uh the story of the x-men so yeah good movie let's move on to the next one that's right we're doing X this was like pretty incredible like this is probably still one of the top 10 comic book movies of all time to this day well actually i don't you know i go back and forth between uh, well you know we'll get to we'll get to We'll get to Days of Future Past later. The action is great. The story has some serious Empire Strikes Back vibes. And though they sideline my boy Scott again, him and Logan do get to share this incredibly emotional moment following Gene's sacrifice at the end. Damn, this movie is good. These movies are good. God damn. What, what are we watching next? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this one. This, this one's a bad one. Now, to be fair, recently during my rewatch, I didn't hate it as much as I used to. The film's biggest problem is these two wildly different plots that are just crashing into each other. The Mutant Cure story is actually pretty compelling, but the Phoenix story is stupid. We get some good acting from Franca Jensen and a pretty emotional ending to her arc with Logan, but this was a disappointing effort for what many thought would be the last X-Men movie. But wait! The Last Stand actually leads really well into our next film in our marathon. After killing Gene, Logan is racked with guilt and is secretly wishing he could die. This is a pretty interesting character study of Logan grappling with his past and dreading an eternity where he has to watch the ones he loves die. It's a pretty great film. Like two thirds of this movie is pretty great. The third act is kind of all over the place. It's pretty bad. Anyway, in the post credit scene, we do get a cool moment where Magneto and Professor, but, but what the fuck? 
This thing is supposed to be dead. But Xavier and Eric let Logan know that there is a man-made threat on the rise that threatens the lives of mutants everywhere, which is a nice little thrilling teaser, kind of setting up events that'll be coming up pretty soon. But we'll get to that later on in our marathon. Uh, but next up, we have... So X-Men 3, The Last Stand definitely felt like a conclusion. Like they really put everything on the line story-wise and they killed a lot of characters in a way that made it feel like they weren't planning on making another one of these movies. And the Wolverine feels like sort of a denouement where we get to see the most famous character from that franchise deal with the fallout from the events of the last film in the trilogy. First Class mines for new material by setting the clock back to the 1960s before Logan ever met Professor Xavier. It used to bother me that Mystique and Charles apparently had this deep friendship that we were never privy to in any of the previous films but i mean x-men be doing soap opera shit like this all the time like remember that time where rogue and magneto were a thing yeah me either but apparently it happened anyway this movie is pretty good this x-men roster is kind of ass though like i don't know why we didn't get like cyclops and gene like this movie is definitely more focused on charles so in some ways i do appreciate that the roster isn't bringing in a whole bunch of fan favorites just to sit them on the bench because again this is a movie about charles and eric mcavoy and Fossbender are perfect casting as Magneto and Xavier. Like, just as perfect as Ian McKellen and Patrick Stewart. And the development of their friendship only intensifies the emotional stakes of the next film in our marathon. This movie fucks. This is like the equivalent of Avengers Endgame in the sense that it was uh, tackling all these legacy characters and characters from different timelines. We get our boy Logan back in the mix, but this story is all about Xavier. Like, Xavier is definitely the main character of this movie, and it's specifically about his relationship with Eric. You abandoned me! You took her away and you abandoned me! Where were you, Charles? We were supposed to protect them! You abandoned us all! EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! And what it does really well is steal a trick from the 2000s Star Trek movie. That movie used time travel to make the audience forget about the events they know from older films. Nero's very presence has altered the flow of history, beginning with the attack on the USS Kelvin, culminating in the events of today, thereby creating an entire new chain of incidents that cannot be anticipated by either party. An alternate reality. Precisely. Ha! Got him! Almost telling the audience, like, you can't get mad that this film is ruining the canon of the films that you know and love. Because they're saying that this is a whole nother timeline. Which gives the creators more room to maybe create some new stories for these characters. Whatever our lives might have been if the time continuum was disrupted, our destinies have changed. I like First Class, but that movie fucked up the timeline to where none of these other movies make any sense. Even though they fuck it up again later on, in this film, you're able to enjoy it because of this time travel trickery. What's, what's, what's next on the list? Oh yeah, well yeah, we got... Uh... <laughs> So now that we're getting back into the Teenage Mutants, we get the film that reintroduces Storm, Cyclops, Jean, and Nightcrawler to the franchise. This is the roster I wanted to see in First Class. And while I now appreciate that First Class focused more on Magneto and Xavier, this movie focuses on the kids, but the movie is fucking awful. It's very hard to believe that the person who directed X2 and Days of Future Past made this wacky ass piece of shit. At this point in the marathon, you're getting, you're gonna start feeling a little is gonna start hitting you. All these movies have like good and bad things about them, right? And most of the time, the good outweighs the bad in these films. We get a couple stinkers like, you know, the your, <laughs> your X-Men Origins and your last stands. But then a movie like this comes along and it's just, it really puts the brakes on the marathon. It makes, it makes, it, it, it stings a bit. Okay, next up in the marathon. Yeah, it's, it, this, I told you this is the rough patch. Next up in the marathon is Dark. <laughs> How did we get here? How have we fallen so low? The last film introduced us to our new team of X-Men and also promised us cool costumes that they never delivered on. I fucking, what's up with that? And this one continues the story of that roster, but it does it in the most boring way possible. I already made a video on this one, but it's just such a disappointing way to end the Fox Men franchise. But I do think that this is an important, like, you know, I mean, if you're a marathon in all the movies, you're a marathon in all the movies, no matter if it's a good one or a bad. But it was interesting rewatching it this time around in this marathon and seeing how these characters sort of wrap things up. I liked a lot of these actors in these roles, but they unfortunately, they just never really, they just never really got any good stories. Like I like Sophie Turner. She had a hilarious performance in, I can't remember the name of the movie. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna let future Alex put a clip right now. I don't do 
Cocaine! I don't even know what it looks like. I don't know what it looks like! But I think she's great. I think Ty Sheridan's really good. I think Cody Smith McPhee as Nightcrawler is like kind of perfect casting. But um, unfortunately, these, these stories were just garbage. These movies were not very good. This was the last film in the Foxman franchise, but luckily it is not the last in our marathon. But the next film in our marathon isn't I mean, it isn't great. Yes, the next film we're talking about is the new. Now, at this point in the marathon, you're going to be going justifiably well, just a little bit insane due to the mutant timeline overload. So this is a good idea to take a break from the popular heroes and watch the little X-Men movie that everyone forgets. Probably because it took like four years to come out. People like to say that this isn't an X-Men movie, but I mean, when I hear people say that, I just think. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, it totally is. This is definitely an X-Men movie. None of these characters are X-Men per se, but they actually mention the X-Men by name. And it seems to tie directly into the events of Logan. Again, the timeline is terrible, so you don't really know where this is chronologically in all these movies, but this seems like a this seems like a good place to fit it. I mean, it would be before Logan, right? Anyway, it feels right. And I like this concept a lot, actually. A bunch of young mutants being trapped in order to be eventually controlled under the guise of being helped at a hospital. It's pretty inventive. I, 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 like, the, I like the idea on paper. It's just so boring. Like, the first half of the movie is so boring. Not the worst X-Men movie. We just we just watch one of those. But we are now out of the woods and nearing the end of our marathon. And good news, we're done with all the bad ones. That's right. Next up, we have... So now after all the bullshittery that took place during the McAvoy films, this film comes in and makes fun of the X-Men movies while also making the X-Men movies fun again. And this also introduces us to the real Merc with the Mouth. Because they Star Trek the timeline, this isn't the Deadpool we met in X-Men Origins. An alternate reality. Precisely. This film felt more comic booky than any of the other X-Men films before it, and it only has two fucking X-Men in it. Like, this is the first time we get to see the X-Men in the classic yellow outfit. Outfit. And just because it's the most comic booky doesn't mean it's the best. Like, I just don't think that this is the best X-Men movie. But yeah, this is a good movie to start after New Mutants. Because New Mutants just, like, was the height of them. Like, it felt like Fox had no idea what they were doing. And audiences were really responding to that. And Deadpool seemed to just kind of raise his hand and say, Hey, I know why all these people are frustrated with the franchise. I'm going to tell you why in the form of a film. So what's next on the marathon list? Oh yeah, that's right. We could, okay, so we could go into the sequel. That seems like the natural thing to do, right? But instead, I think it's time we visit an old friend. <laughs> Now, I'll admit that chronologically, this doesn't really make any sense. Like, it doesn't make any sense to have this film here, but it emotionally, it totally works. After going through the loop-de-loops of this franchise's many films, varying in quality and sincerity, this one just comes out of nowhere and is one of the most beautiful films I've ever seen. It's a great film about fathers and family. Again, the theme of family comes up a lot through this whole franchise. Wolverine seems to be habitually a father figure for some young person in this franchise, whether it be Rogue or, um, well, I can't think of anyone else right now. <laughs> but now with Daphne Keene's character, Laura, in this movie, he's re the reluctant father figure for her. And also being the father of this new X-Men, like Charles was his father figure and he created the X-Men. And now Wolverine, I'm sure that all these kids sort of see him as a father figure. Like if they go build a school in Canada, they're probably going to have a Wolverine statue somewhere. I keep thinking at some point when I watch this movie, like I've seen this movie a million times, I keep thinking that this is the time that I'm not going to cry when Laura turns the cross into an X, but um, still haven't made it. Still, that, this wasn't the time. Still cried my eyes out, man. That that scene is still so emotional. And I think it is because it is such a conclusion to uh, this franchise, especially watching all these films in this marathon. There's a lot of gaps in between filmmaking, some of them more like important than others, like you know, some films like The New Mutants and the Wolverine. Even movies like The Last Stand, like, you know, some of us saw that once in theaters and we were just like, we're never going to revisit that because why? We were so disappointed. Rewatching all these films in a marathon and seeing all these characters that pop up in the different movies, seeing their arcs and their motivations, their their highs, their lows, and all these, these different paths and adventures that they go down. Watching them back to back like this, it really helps you appreciate the way that the story ended for Xavier and Logan in this movie. Now that you've been enthralled and inspired and disappointed and embarrassed by how bad things got, and now at the end here, you've bawled your fucking eyes out. We need some, we need some happy times. We need some catharsis. Fuck 
Wolverine. The hairy motherfucker ups the ante by dying. What a dick. Like, you ever watch a movie that just makes you very emotional? And then afterwards, you're just like, I just want to watch some cartoons or something. Is, is Scooby-Doo on? We reconvene with Wade as he is saved physically and emotionally by the X-Men. As he learns what Logan learned in the first X-Men film. It's all about family. And no, I won't be doing any Fast and Furious jokes. I told you, Shazam ruined that. That Shazam killed that. It's not funny anymore. Deadpool finds a family with the X-Men. Josh Brolin was awesome as Cable. As he beats his domino, is just... Uh, please can we just i can, can we please bring her back she she's amazing and we get a redemption for juggernaut i know some people don't like this version of juggernaut they didn't like how he's depicted in this movie i thought it was fucking great and as goofy as this ending is it kind of leaves things open-ended enough where they have carte blanche when it comes to the whole multiverse saga thing that the mcu is struggling with an alternate reality precisely that is my X-Men marathon list. But what are your thoughts on this list? Do you think it should go in a different order? Do you feel like New Mutants doesn't belong on the list because it doesn't involve the actual X-Men? Or do you think that that's a worthy addition because it's still in the mutant universe? And what's your favorite X-Men movie? You can rank them all if you want to. Just like leave it in the comments. What's your favorite? What's your least favorite? But until next time, stay safe, my little mutants. And may the force be with you.